And you've both been, in your work and also tonight, very critical of happiness as mere hedonism, pleasure-seeking, or even simply as a feeling. What does true or deeper human happiness consist of, and how is it attained? You? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't... First of all, there's something you said five minutes ago or so. I think you were still at the podium. Mm -hmm that I agree with profoundly, which is that happiness is a side effect. It's, it's, not, it's not a thing in itself. It's something that comes upon you. It, it's like an act of grace in some sense. And my sense I is that... I accept even the theological undertone of what okay, you said. Okay, no, okay, no, the category okay. of grace can be used in a perfect atheist sense. It's yes. one of the deepest categories. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, good. Well, I, I, would think, I would think that we could find agreement about that because, partly because of your psychoanalytic background. You know perfectly well that we're subject to forces within us that aren't of our voluntary control. And certainly happiness is one of those because you cannot will yourself to be happy. You might be able to will yourself to be unhappy, but you can't will yourself to be happy. There are certain preconditions that have to be met that are quite mysterious in order for you to be happy, and then it happens. And then maybe if you're wise, you, you regard that as, as a, like an in, a minor incomprehensible miracle that somehow you happen to be in the right place at the right time. Now, I've made the case that the most effective means of pursuing the good life, which is not the same as pursuing happiness, is to adopt something like a stance of maximal responsibility towards the suffering and malevolence in the world. And I think that that should be pursued primarily as an individual responsibility. It's not like I don't think that political and familial larger organizations are necessary, but in the final analysis, we each suffer alone in some fundamental sense. And we have our own malevolence to contend with in some fundamental sense. And the proper beginning of moral behavior, which is the proper beginning of the right way to act in the world, is to take responsibility for that. I think you do what you can to conceptualize the highest good that you can conceptualize. That's the first thing, to develop a vision of what might be. And it has to be a personalized vision as well as a universalized vision. And then you work diligently to ensure that your actions are in keeping with that. And you allow yourself on that pursuit to be informed by the knowledge of your ignorance and the necessity for acting and speaking in truth. And a fair bit of that, I believe, is derived, I think it's fair to say that that's derived from an underlying Judeo-Christian ethic, and I make no bones about the fact that I think of those stories, um, metaphysically or philo philosophically or psychologically, as fundamental to the proper functioning of our society insofar as it can function properly. And so it's not happiness, it's meaning. And meaning is to be found in the adoption of responsibility. And then, I'll close with this. Responsibility is not only to do what you believe to be right. That's not, because that's duty, that, that's not enough. Yeah. That's sort of what the conservatives put forward as the ultimate virtue, which is duty. It's not that, it's, it's that you're, you're acting in a manner that is in accordance with what you believe to be right, but you're doing it in a manner that simultaneously expands your ability to do it, which means that you cannot stay safely ensconced within the confines of your current ethical beliefs. You have to stand on the edge of what you know and encounter continually the consequences of your ignorance to expand your domain of knowledge and ability so that you're not only acting in an efficient manner, but you're increasing the efficiency and productivity and meaningfulness of what it is that you're engaged in. And I think that, and I believe that the psychological evidence supports this, even the neuropsychological evidence, is that that's when true happiness descends upon you. Because it's an indication from the deepest recesses of your psyche, biologically instantiated, that you're in the right place at the right time. You're doing what you should be doing, but you're doing it in a manner that expands your capacity to do even better things in the future. And, and that's the, I think that's the deepest human instinct there is. It's not rational. It's far deeper than that. And it's something, that, it's something that's genuine and that exists within us and that constitutes a proper guide if you don't pervert it with self-deception and deceit. So that's my perspective. <laughs>